Welcome chemistry students to the last section in our chapter on matter and change and we're going to talk to you a little bit about this wonderful chemical shorthand that we use uh, to save us some time uh, writing names and chemical formulas for uh, elements and compounds and you'll maybe recognize the periodic table here and all of the wonderful information thereon. Chemical symbols uh, represent the names of the elements no matter what language you speak, or no matter what alphabet you write in, whether it's Sanskrit or Chinese or whatever, it's, you always use the exact same symbol. So the symbol for carbon is a capital C, no matter what language you write in. Um, it's a shorthand for the names of all the elements, and it's standard for all scientists. Some of the elements get their names from different ways. A lot of them have English sounding names. Some of them get it from their Latin chemical names. Some of them are devised from the different mythology um, that is the background behind the chemical. And then some of those elements have names after scientists like Einsteinium and Mendeleev Mendeleevium, <laughs> named after Einstein and also after Mendeleev. So what do we do with those? Well. We want to put those chemical symbols together to represent a chemical compound. And we would do that by writing a chemical formula. And that chemical formula is going to show us some important information, not only what elements are involved uh, using the symbols, but also how much of each element is involved in that particular compound using a subscript. Right. And, and something tricky with the subscripts um, is that the subscript refers to the element whose symbol is right before the number. Um, there. So in this example, there are eight carbons and ten hydrogens. So the subscript refers to the element um, right before it, the symbol right before it. Some people think that that would be one carbon and eight hydrogens, but that's totally wrong. Right. And, you know, we'll eventually get to the point in the year where we're writing balanced chemical equations and we'll be using something uh, called coefficients. But right now we're focusing in on these subscripts and that is part of this chemical formula that we write because, you know, writing C8, H10, N4O2 clearly saves us a lot of time uh, when we're trying to spell out the word that represents this chemical compound. I mean, if you name this according to the uh, rules of nomenclature for uh, organic compounds, this is going to be a pretty long name. But I have, it is, and I have to say though, we love this compound, don't we? It's delicious. Delicious every morning, gotta have it. Alrighty, so that should wrap up the chapter for you. Make sure that you review all the podcasts and go through your notes, compare them to your notes, and good luck as you're studying the chapter.